for Donegal. Yeah, but there's a, there's a guy that deserves great credit, Colin McFadden. A couple of years ago, it killed him nearly to play football. He had so little mobility. But the, the conditioning that he has managed to achieve, fantastic. Colin McFadden pulls up the play. Gone forward is Anthony Thompson. He scored once already. This time it's wide. And Cork stay alive with eight minutes or thereabouts to go. Yeah, they stay alive. All right, Donegal have had a couple of opportunities there in the last few minutes that could have put this game to bed completely. OK, they're five points up coming down the stretch, but they've had a couple of bad misses. Punch down again is aimed at Anthony Thompson. Good play by Donegal. Thompson, little or no option, he has no support, except back here. Far as Mark McHugh. A nice little jink to the left, then lays it off to McFadden to the right. Trying to get inside the court cover, lovely play by McFadden. Gone inside is Leo McLoon. Surely he's taking too many steps, the referee says play on. And McLoon cuts it over the bar. Now the referee has blown his whistle and he's given a free out. No, he had blown it that little bit earlier, but again, it was a call that I felt should have been, he should have been allowed to continue. I didn't think he overcarried the ball. Owen Cadigan to Paddy Kelly. Dennis O'Sullivan. Slow build up by Cork. But they need to give the long ball into Nicholas Murphy. No point having a six foot five foot forward if you don't pump it into him. Kerrigan does it now. In towards Nicholas Murphy, gets a touch to it. But Donegal are there in numbers. Led by Mark McHugh. So much was made of the tactical awareness of Jim McGuinness of Donegal. And how would Cork counteract Mark McHugh? He's playing really well in that role again, and despite Paddy Kelly scoring a point early in the first half. And up down at the other end, it's, yes, the fullback, Neil McGee. And it's an easy ball given away. Ball is wide. Alan Quirk wants to take the quick kick out again. Goes back for the tee, but the clock is ticking. Six minutes left. I know there's six minutes left, but it must be said, Donegal have out thought, out fought, have been just that little bit smarter in their decision making than Cork. And through the second half, Cork have been caught in that web that Donegal have put up in front of them, and Cork need goals at the moment. Pierce O'Neill laying it off as Aidan Walsh. Kieran Sheehan getting by David Coldrick, the referee. He's looking to see who's making the run. Here's a man who can score goals. Colin O'Neill on the turn. Quickly hits it over the bar for his third point of this semi-final. And just brings Cork a little bit closer. Yeah, good score once again for O'Neill. Uh, nice move up along the far side. But notice Donegal are slowing things down a little bit at the moment. Uh, notice the uh, Coldrick, the referee, is going in there to have a word with his umpires about something that has happened. Referee is down there having a consultation with Mickey Kelly. That's uh, Mickey that's talking to him there. And obviously something that was uh, spotted off the ball. And uh, he wants to have a word with the court footballer. That is Nicholas Murphy. So Nicholas, Damon McGee told to uh, stay away from this. And Nicholas Murphy, I think, is going to be shown a yellow card, just like Graham Canty and Aidan Walsh earlier. Well, I mentioned that earlier actually in the commentary, and but that happened a couple of minutes ago. I'm surprised that now it took to now actually to bring it to the referee's attention. Five minutes, four points between the teams. Kick out this time comes straight to Graham Panty, trying to get away from the challenge. Gets the free. Dennis O'Sullivan, Paddy Kelly, Nicholas Murphy is on the edge of the square. Carl Lacey puts in the challenge. So too Mark McHugh. Ball bubbles all over the place. Neil Gallagher. It eventually ends up with Frank McGlenn. Has to go there a second time. Ships it up first. Harry McBrearty. Away comes Mark McElhenney. Frank McGlenn. They're in the middle of the field at this stage. It's Danny Gall. Counter attack. Soak up the pressure and then counter attack. In space, Mark McElhenney. Tapping this. Over the crossbar. Surely it's Danny Gall's day in Coke Park. And the Ulster champions are looking good. They came in their thousands from Bundorn, from Donegal Town, from Bally Buffet. Donegal outnumbering the Cork supporters in Croke Park. And they are now beginning to sing. They're beginning to enjoy the moment. 
I just watched the verve, the actual, you know, the, the pace, the determination of McGlynn that time getting up in support. I think he's torn a muscle maybe in that run. Uh, give the ball to McElhenney, who fired a, a deserved score for Donegal. Three minutes left in this All Ireland semi final. And again, Donegal put in the challenge, but the referee's whistle has blown. And that's going to be free for Cork. And again, match official has his black book out. Acknowledging that Leo McLuhan says he didn't see it, or didn't hear it, I should say. So it's quickly taken. Michael Shields. Aidan Walsh to Kieran Sheehan. That's a pretty good effort. Is it accurate enough? The referee is looking, the umpire is watching. And the umpire signals wide. It remains 16 points to 11. I suppose in many ways the likes of Neil Gallagher will get plaudits after this. You know, so many Donegal players will get plaudits. But the intensity of the game that Donegal brought to Crow Park today is what stood to them. They've managed to get their system in place. They've managed to take the terms of the game. They've taken the most of their opportunities when they came their way. And, you know, it looks at this stage as if they're going to win it. But they come out fully deserving winners if, if, if it's that how it ultimately finishes. Frank McGlenn gets a huge round of applause as he's going off. And I think it's more to do with the Donegal supporters. They're really on tender hooks. They are now just a minute and a half away from a place in the All-Ireland final. A feat that was achieved 20 years ago, in 1992, when Martin McHugh, James McHugh, Anthony Malloy, legends of Donegal football, won their first and only All-Ireland title. Long ball into Nicholas Murphy, knocks it down, can Cork destroy the party? But coming away with it is Paddy McGrath. McGrath going forward, heads towards the Hogan stand, then pulls the brakes and lays it back first, Carl Lacey. And Cork now have to counter attack, or go back and counter defend as such, falling back the numbers as Michael Murphy controls the situation in the middle of the field. Gets by Dennis Walsh, still Michael Murphy. Laying it off as the substitute. This is Declan Walsh. Tony Goal retained possession. Colin McFadden. The Ulster champions have come to Croke Park and surely at this stage, with exactly 69 minutes and 27 eight seconds played, surely have booked a place in the All-Ireland final against Dublin or Mayo. It's Paul Kerrigan. Stepping aside the challenge. Going long, very long. Up towards Nicholas Murphy. Murphy. Cork need to produce something special out of this. Nice ball inside. It's Aidan Walsh. Tony Gold back there defending. Paddy Kelly laying it off. There's a chance here. Here comes the shot. Blocked down magnificently. There's a wall of green and gold jerseys there. And Tony Gold celebrates. Neil McGee tells them to step up, get up with the uh, Tony Gold defender still down on the ground. Wind it. And he comes away with David Walsh. Three minutes of additional time. Paddy McGuire. Back there too is centre half forward Leo McLuhan. Looks like it was Mark McHugh that blocked it. I'll give you that in a moment as I keep an eye on the ball in the middle of the field. Neil Gallagher comes away with it. Lays it off. Dunny Gold. 55,169 attendance. Thoroughly enjoying the majority of them from Donegal. Thoroughly enjoying this moment. Cork were the hot favourites, but Donegal have produced the goods. Back for us, Neil Gallagher. Donegal retained the possession. Time ticking away. We're into injury time. Three minutes of injury time to be played. We already have one minute on the clock knocked away. Mark McHugh gives it out for us, Michael Murphy. David Walsh loses possession. Kieran Sheehan. Cork with one last attack. Down towards Colin O'Neill. He's inside. He scored a goal. 71 minutes, 20 seconds played. And Cork are back in this All Ireland semi final. Just when we were writing them off, the long ball finally worked. O'Neill got inside the cover and he tucked it away beautifully past Paul Durkin. Now we've a nervous jangling. What, two minutes left in this semi-final? As Donegal make another substitution. This is Daniel McLaughlin. 
Yeah, that's a beautifully taken goal by Colin O'Neill. Judged the fight of the ball perfectly, nipped him beside him and McGee, and the game all of a sudden is back in the melting pot. From a game that Donegal should have won well at this stage, my God, fair juice to Cork Spirit at their ability to kind of not to give up. They're right back in it. 72 minutes played, one minute of injury time left. Cork have to win possession and they have to win it cleanly. But Pauli Kassan is still to have fouled and that is a free for Donegal as Paddy McGrearty is the player that's going off injured. Yes, and Leo McLoon was the man that time that won the free 50-50 ball, stayed with the task that he was faced with and manages now to allow, I think it's Michael Murphy, to eat down the clock a bit. Michael Murphy to take the free. For one couple of minutes, Tony Gall were already celebrating. They're now on their feet. It's been a nerve-jangling occasion for them, and particularly with Colm O'Neill's goal, who has contributed a goal and three points from play. This is on the 45-metre line, just a few metres out. As we head towards that 73rd minute, will there be added time again? Will Michael Murphy's kick Go straight over the bar, go wide, he has to kill it really. He goes for it, it's curling left and it's wide. And he really had to try and kill the ball to try and delay the kick out yes. from, Mike, from Alan Quirk. Alan good. Quirk takes it quickly, out for his Michael Shields. 73 minutes, 22 seconds, the full time whistle is blown. Donegal are in the All Ireland final for the first time in 20 years, for the second time in their history. Mark McHugh will celebrate like his dad did 20 years ago, like his uncle James did, like this manager, Jim McGuinness, who strategically has developed a game of football that suits his players. They have dreamt, they have worked, they have journeyed together, and they are now there, ready to face on the 23rd of September, either Dublin or Mayo, and nobody Absolutely nobody can take it away from Donegal. This was richly deserved. Absolutely, Marty. A day for some celebration of Donegal. The power of the collective is what would have out today. A magnificent achievement by them. A wonderful triumph of organisation, of spirit, and of total belief in a system that McGuinness put in place at the beginning of the year. You know, he recognised the, re- the, 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 the need to re-evaluate the way they play and maybe to revise the way Gaelic football was played. But it's a credit to him that he expanded things this year. He has actually perfected the whole thing of a counter-attack. But those 18 or 19 players that came on today deserve the greater credit. They fully merited that victory. The game in here is underdogs. The game in here with a lot of people not giving them a lot of hope. But all year they have been a credit. And they fully deserve to be in their second All-Ireland. A joy indeed for Donegal, despite Colm O'Neill's late goal. It's Donegal that qualified for the All-Ireland final on this scoreline. Donegal, Ulster champions, 16 points. Cork, Munster champions, 111.